Hello, welcome to Modic Zone Twenty One, and now our next session is from the Alex. Say hello to Alex. Hi. <laughs> so let me introduce Alex. Uh, Alex is the founder of Heartmart.io. The title is still say the simple is effective. That's nice. Title. <laughs> yeah. uh, he is a founder and marketing automation specialist at Heartmart.io, and he helps entrepreneurs and company to sell more with the automation. Now we will like would like to know more much more information from you. As you said, it is not going to be non tech, uh, Craig. It's going to be non tech. Then we would like to see what is the non tech information, what other insightful information you have in your station. Yes, let's Hello. see. Hello, over to you. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, I'm very delighted to speak here again. I was speaking at the last Multicon as well, and uh, yes, like um, I was introduced from Avinash that um, yeah, I'm the founder of Hotmod.io. And we um, are a marketing agency and we um, provide Mautic as a software as a service to our clients. And yeah, we got into marketing in 2012 and started with WordPress and online courses and funnels, sales funnels for online courses, for our own courses, and um, switched in 20. 17 to Mautic and took it from there to only work with Mautic anymore. And um, then we switched away from Active Campaign, which we were using before for all our automations. And today I'm going to show you, um, in my opinion, or what we saw, um, what is actually the biggest problem in automated sales or automated marketing campaigns and yeah that's the thing so i share my screen with you or i share one tab with you um i try to not make it too um, um too um, slow so i try to walk through pretty quickly through the presentation i have a few things prepared in Mautic as well um, to show you how to use lead scoring and how to use points. Um, yeah, and I think tomorrow there is another really in-depth um, session about how to use points in Mautic as well. So yeah, so but here it's in general about the marketing perspective and how to communicate with people the right way at least what we've seen with a lot of our clients and what we've learned over the last almost 10 years so yeah let's go um yeah so nobody likes salespeople, um and especially not at parties so that's the thing what is true or what tends to be true especially if you want to make a good conversation with somebody. And um, let's start with the secret of a great conversation. Um, there are quite a few books out there about this and how to make great conversation, what to do, what you need to point to in your speech or in your um mimics and so on and so forth and i think that's um everything too in depth because the only real secret of conversation or of a great conversation is to listen so it's actually not that complicated um if you really get into it and if you really manage to listen to somebody and the biggest difficulty for us in online marketing and in automated sales is how can we listen to someone who is on the internet and who is actually not talking to us directly so um but who is very quickly in their decisions and very quickly away from our universe and so how can we how can we do this and the first thing if you attend a party or 
um, a meeting or something is if you don't know the person, you ask um, a, converse, uh, a conversation starter, which could be, so what brings you here? And this works for me very well. So this simple question helps to get along with people and to start um, asking them questions or to get the permission to ask them questions. Because the thing with people is everybody wants to hear themselves talk and everybody wants to stay or be on the stage, um, which is one of the reasons why I'm talking here, <laughs> because I like it. And um, But in, in general, it's a very simple psychological principle that people really like to listen to their own voice and really like to present themselves, um, no matter where and no matter what. So if you ask the right questions, people start thinking that this conversation is actually a great one, even though you don't say a word besides some questions. So listening is the thing. And if you ask somebody what brings you here, it starts the conversation. And the thing um, how we do this in general in online marketing would be we create traffic. So we um, do something that people come to our website or come to our landing pages and so on and so forth. And of course, there is a lot um, out there to gain traffic or to create traffic to your sales pages and to the top of the funnel of your um, automation pro or automated process. So the most common thing is SEO or organic traffic. So you would provide blog um, posts, YouTube videos, um, audios, podcasts, and so on and so forth, that people find you. And this actually um, clarifies the question, what brings you here? Because they are interested in your store or in your stuff. So um, provide stuff at first and people will find you is still a very validate and, and, and very good way to get into the conversation of somebody and bring them to the top of the funnel, which is the very first starting point to sell something to somebody. And um, of course, you can use paid traffic as well, which is very smart and um, you should do on some point. Um, but you need to see what are you doing with them afterwards. So the introduction to get somebody to your top of your funnel is actually the hardest part um, also at the party. So once this is done, it gets better or not. It depends, of course, um, maybe you don't like the person, maybe the person don't like, um, don't likes you and so on and so forth, but um, you can not predict what's coming in this conversation. So what do you do for a living would be the next thing. So as soon as you know, okay, somebody likes you a little bit or you um, like this person and you really want to know more about them, um, you ask the next questions. And that would lead to the middle of funnel, which would be your lead magnet, actually. So in terms of marketing automation, you could um, offer something what people actually want to have inside your content or beneath your content or some freebie or goodie what they could download or what they could get. So this would be the start of phase two in um, um, in terms of marketing, which leads to the middle of funnel, which leads to lead generation. So ask them for their email address in exchange um, for some information or for some for some product they would like to have. But first, you need to know what do you actually need. So we are again there that you need to listen what your prospects actually want and what they are going through, which fears do they have and which uh, problems do they need to solve or what they want to solve. So inform and focus on your opponent is the most important thing. And again, we are there 
how can you listen in an online world uh, world to somebody who is not actively talking to you. And with Mautic, we found we can do this in very, uh, in, in, in many, many ways, which is awesome. Actually, we can track them so we can see where are they going, where are they clicking through, to which pages are they going, what are they visiting. And of course, as soon as they download something or as soon as they um, give us their email address, we can create um, a very good profile of them and ask within the first few emails a few questions to understand more what they're craving for. So this is actually a very good way to gain trust and to bring people to a certain point to trust you and to understand that actually you are the right person to attend in this conversation no matter which product you're selling. And a lot of salespeople don't do that. A lot of salespeople are just say, yeah, screw that. I am the one on the stage and I am showing everybody um, what's going on and how to solve problems. But the problem is it's not about you. It's never about you in a sales process. So if somebody has a problem, they own it. It's not that the salesperson can take the problem from them. And this, again, doesn't matter where um, the problem lies or, or which kind, which sort of problem it is. So if somebody needs a software, they need the software or he or she needs the software. It's not the salesperson who has the solution per se. It's the, 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 the human behind this, who needs to be listened to and who wants to find out for themselves that your software is actually the thing I want to have. So stop talking about yourself. And most people, especially in software, are talking about features and what their background is and how great their servers are and everything is environmental friendly and so on and so forth. And actually, it's never about the person they address. Um, it's most of the time only about themselves and their own features and how great their product is. And you find this everywhere. And we're going through this um, transformation with every client we have. And every client is talking in the beginning about their product and pitching and pitching and pitching and pitching and showing how shiny and prosperous their world is. But the word of the client is actually, or of the potential client is actually not shiny and prosperous. That's the reason why they have a problem. And that's the reason why they want to solve this problem. So we need to find something where this person can see, okay, you are the one who is helping me and you are the one I want to attend. So stop talking about your product. Stop talking about yourself unless someone asks you to. And nobody is going to ask um, for your opinion on the internet in the beginning. At the very, um, eventually this will happen, but not at the beginning. Um, so what do you do? if you are not allowed to talk about the features and the great things your product offers, actually, um, you give them um, as much help as possible for the, for the questions and for the answers they gave you before. So if they are showing you in some way through pages they are visiting or through goodies they are downloading or through questionnaires they are um, um, answering, if they are showing you they have a certain need, you need to give them as much information and DIY um, um, uh, solutions and so on as you can. Because in the end, the person is never going to sue their own pants. So or to glue their own shoes or to create their own software. 
uh, even not in Mautic, we've seen so many, we have, we gain so many clients just because we are giving away all the knowledge we know in free calls and on YouTube and on our blog. And so we get a lot of clients asking us to do this for them because they don't have the time and actually they don't want to get involved into IT and Linux and Composer and so on and so forth. So they need somebody who can do this. And you're basically showing them via helping them and giving them everything they need to solve them to solve the problems for themselves via this you are showing them that you are actually the right person to ask for help so if you get asked for more you can start putting them into the bottom of your funnel which would be sales uh, but before you need to keep track of the engagement so as i said before in Mautic, it's very easy to create points and point action, point triggers um, and phases and tags and segments and so on, which you can use to get people deeper in your universe and to segment or to um, understand who needs what. Um, probably a male person needs different shoes than a female person or probably a male person wants to be addressed differently than a female person. So this is one question, are you male or female, which would solve exactly this kind of, how do I address this person? And it's only one question. And so many people don't ask this question and they just run through straight through their, um, their funnel and they shoot their emails or their uh, SMS and so on, their messages straight out one after the other, neglecting the actual need of the person or neglecting the actual stage where this person is in the user journey. So um, as soon as you start keeping track of where they are and are they actually opening your emails, are they actually clicking on the links you provide, are they actually downloading the assets. As soon as you keep, uh, start tracking that, you get a lot more insights and you start spending less money on sending emails, on um, creating reports, on having people write uh, copyright uh, copy and so on, because everything fits together in the end. And if you don't need to write so much copy for um, so less people actually, um, you win in the end. So lead scoring is your best friend. And this is done in Mautic pretty easy. And as soon as you start lead scoring, you can introduce the bottom of funnel. So as soon as you start um, um, putting somebody through a funnel and very basically just control or, or um, um, see if somebody is opening your emails, you can enter, you can let them enter the bottom of funnel, which would be the sales emails or not. So I just show you very quickly here in another window um, how we are doing this in a very basic way. Um, let's see here, another tab. So you can create these points in Mautic and um, yeah, sorry, that's German. But anyway, you have these points and you have your action triggers and you can say, okay, points for email. And then you say one point for um, email, opens an email. And then you say, okay, that's the warm up of one. So, and it's not repeatable because if it's repeatable, you mess up your system actually, because if they open it two times, they gain two points. And actually that's not, the, that's not the thing you want to achieve. So let's save that. And you can have this for as many emails as you want, but in your campaign, you would say, okay, um, in here, where is it? it? Takes quite a long time at the moment. 
maybe because of the stream. So inside the campaign builder, somebody's coming in. I just have a test segment here. Somebody's coming in. So they are at the beginning of the party. They found you somewhere on the internet and actually are interested in your freebie. So they sign up, come into the funnel, go through a double opt-in process or not, whatever, and get your warm-up emails. And the system itself in Mautic can now track, okay, did they open this email? And you make the same thing for the second, the third, and so on and so forth. You can have here as many emails as you need to gain all the information you need to make a great sales um, system. And on some day, you need to ask, okay, does this person has enough points? And if no, you end the campaign for it because it's important to let people go. You don't shoot at someone who already turned um, the back on you. So if they have more or equal three points in this case, for example, you can say, okay, let's change their face to a sales qualified lead and send them sales emails. Why not? Because you know of the emails before and of all the questions and all the data you gained that they are actually interested. So you can give it to them and we come to this um, later on, um, but then you can start selling and not earlier. It's very important to sell, to don't sell to a person who is actually not there yet. Why would you do this if you don't know that they really want it? And um, from there, you can just check, okay, did they visit the checkout thank you page? Yes or no? If yes, change the campaign, end the campaign. If no, send the next sales mail. And you can do this and give it a shot for as many times as you want. Um, which is great and which is so easy in Mautic. It's so simple. It's way easier than in a lot of other um, programs. So yeah, use that. It's, it's really, really worth doing that. So let's get back to the slides. So yeah, if they don't gain these three points, let them go if they don't want. So that's very important because in the bottom of funnel, you really start um, digging deep and you really want to sell to these people because they actually showed that they are interested. And at a party, this would be the part where somebody says, yeah, okay, I'm not interested and turns your back and goes away. So you would at a party not run after them and say, yeah, but I know you need this actually. And everybody would point at you and ask how crazy you are. So you wouldn't do this. And a bad salesperson does exactly that because they don't want to lose. So I go after the person and try to shove them into my sales funnel and, and sell something to them. But actually you don't want to push. So not everybody gets to the bottom of your funnel and into the sales process. So let them go if they don't if they if they don't want and don't sell to everybody because not everybody is your client. So, but to the few people who get there and who actually ask you eventually, maybe you could help me. Maybe you are the person who knows how could I how I could tackle my problem and how could how I could solve something. Um, then it's the right time to sell to these people because you don't need to sell anymore. You only need to give them the solution instead of push a product at their face. So only sell to those who want. And this is really easy and this is really um, repeatable. And you can automize, uh, automate exactly this process, which is very interesting and very time saving and so on and so forth. And it makes fun. <laughs> so that's the thing, how we tackle um, sales. And that's the thing I want to give out to you guys that probably it's easier to sell if you only present the solutions to those who want them and 
don't push too hard, especially not at the beginning and especially not at parties. Thanks. Um, if you want to learn more about this, um, head over to my YouTube. It's Hartmut Academy or make a free call with me. We can talk about these things. And yeah, that's the thing from my side. Thanks a lot. I can hear you, Avinash. I think yeah. you are muted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> thanks, thanks for giving uh, some insight, insightful uh, information about self funnel. Because I was, I can uh, relate this score to because I was work very closely with uh, SEO marketing and all this thing. Also working with the uh, creating a uh, platform for the marketing automation. Mm -hmm. Let me just check it. Is there any question for us? Uh, Okay, I have a couple of questions based on my understanding. Uh, I would like to ask, like, uh, why would you need to warm up and build a trust? Like, uh, because sometimes what happen um, if you serve the good customer, that can be a, as a mouth publicity. But why generally? Why we require to build trust more and more? Generally? Yes. So usually, it's there are two. No, actually, there are more. But let's say there are two different types of uh, leads you can create. So you can create hot leads, which are actually at the point where you can start selling directly. And you can create cold leads, which actually don't really know what, what you are selling. And they are not there yet. So they don't they are not at the point where they just go out and take the credit card and give it to you. So um, to, you, need to, you need to segment these two phases. That's very important. And that's what most people don't do because they are too lazy or many marketers, especially marketers who are in the game for a very long time, um, or that's what I've seen, are just they have the the um, the system and they are working with this and they burn a lot of leads just because they're too lazy to introduce a new way of tracking something and um so as soon as you start um dividing hot leads and warm leads you know okay i really need to warm up the cold leads or the, the the new leads which don't actually know if my product fits best so that's the reason why you want to warm up actually these people. And the good thing about questionnaires and emotic, you can use forms just to ask questions even after people um, um, signed up for your newsletter, for example, or for some kind of, of uh, freebie, you can send them another form in an email um, to a landing page and then they can fill out the form. They don't need to put in the email address because it's already um, Maltic knows already who this person is and where to put the data, which is very nice because you can ask them, how much do you know already about my product? Or do you want to buy a jeans now? <laughs> and okay. if they say yes, okay, perfect. Then you don't need to warm this person up anymore. So that's the thing what 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 we found which is very very necessary or very good to to segment and then to know okay i sent the warm-up emails or i sent the sales emails directly that's the reason why i would recommend warming up and ask as many questions as possible got it got it thanks thanks uh I have another couple has uh, a couple a question is that i just put it into the show how will you handle the points and scoring with the repeat data buyer? Mm -hmm. Question. Yeah, with, with repeating bias, it's it depends on your internal um, system. So first, of course, you need to, if you want to handle it with Mautic, or if you want to resell with Mautic to make a resales campaign, you need to connect your marketplace, let's say WooCommerce or Magento or whatever, with Mautic, of course, that they can uh, interact and that you get the data. What did the person buy? And um, what is the perfect cross or upsell product? And in which time? 
So what we are doing for some of our customers, they have um, they have coffee, for example, one of them, and they are selling coffee. And then we we don't um, score after a sale, after they buy something anymore. We don't collect points anymore. So we just collect um, engagement or we just take a look. Did they open the email? Did they click on the download? If yes, we send directly the next um, the next uh, sales mail. So for example, one re-engagement funnel in terms of coffee would be, okay, they buy the first time. And after 21 days, we check, did they buy again? If no, because we just have the data of this time, the date and time field when they bought the yeah. last time. And after 21 days, we check, okay, did they buy again? Yes or no? If not, um, we are asking them for a review on the coffee. So, and if they do the review, they come to a thank you page after they made the review, the feedback, they come to a thank you page and then we can just ask in the, in the same, um, um, in the same uh, campaign in Mautic, did they visit the thank you page? If yes, we send them directly an offer for the next coffee. And this works great. So usually it's it's not important to gain points anymore afterwards. You need, but you need to know, okay, how do we handle the process? You need to take the customer by the hand and show them one step after the other. That's very important. Don't let them do something because yeah, then you're not in charge. Yeah, that was a good 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 insight then from that. Interesting. Uh, I would like uh, another question, like so for the, like a new business people, like who are just starting it with the like social media kind of thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they right away, not putting so much money on the marketing automation. What, uh, advice you will suggest to that people, like how they can, uh, attract the customer or engage the customer towards their website or their app, or maybe the social media, a uh, buying platform, right? How they will, mm -hmm. uh, what the, the advice you will give it? Um, yeah, I I would recommend to any to anybody to use Mautic, of course, because it's it's very cheap actually. From the beginning, you can, uh, in, I mean, especially if you're low on budget, you need to learn how to set up your Mautic. Um, but I would start uh, the the most yeah the biggest mistake what we made in the beginning. So from 2012 to 14, we did not collect email addresses. And that's the, that's the biggest mistake you can make. Actually, it's for because you never know how can you uh, engage again with people, especially on social media. And but if you get them into your universe, into your email um, system, you can engage with them every time, especially at the at now at COVID. We have so many people who had a hard time not having email addresses and they didn't collect email addresses until COVID, until nobody came to their website anymore because they, they had a travel, travel blog or something. So nobody was on travel blogs at this time. And, and um, everybody was wishing to have their email addresses because then they could sell them, I don't know, ebooks <laughs> or <laughs> photo filters or whatever. And, and um, yeah, I would suggest to anybody start collecting email addresses as soon as possible, even though if you're only making your online presence on social media. Good, good. Thanks, thanks. Uh, last uh, a question from my side. I just want to understand, like uh, you was mentioning one line called uh, uh, don't talk about your product. Okay. I not get exactly what uh, you wanted to say on that. So mm -hmm. can you just a uh, little bit uh, give us some insight on that one? You mean, why not talking about yourself? No, no, your not talking about yourself. I got it, that one. You mm -hmm. also mentioned that not to, not to talk about the product also. That is the one and so lines was there. Correct me if I'm wrong. I, 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 I didn't, I didn't understand it. Okay. Can you just go to the, that slide, uh, uh, where we are talking about, 
I go to the slides again, little moment. Yes. I can open it, I can share the slides again. Um, it's here, so. So just say stop where it is. Mm, uh, wait, uh, wait. Uh, back, 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 back one, back. Yeah. This okay, one? So, huh, this one, okay, you only mentioned about it, not, stop talking about US, not about product. So I think I got the mission to do. I think we should talk about the product, right? That's what you were mentioning. Yes. Product and product feature, how can we best fit to their requirement? That's about we have to talk about. Now, it's it's very difficult, actually. And so that's what most people are doing. They talk about the product and they tell you, okay, with this product, you can solve this or that problem. But um, people are emotional and if I am emotional and actually I, I don't know, let's say um, I have, let's say you are selling shoes, yeah, mm. fancy sports shoes. So that's your product. And you don't want to tell anybody, hey, this is the best shoe and you can run so fast and it's so comfortable and it's amazing and it's going to look great on you. So that's only features. Um, you want to talk about the feelings of the person who wants to buy new shoes because the person is emotional and the person is standing there and they have probably a probably they are thinking oh, my shoes are so old and everybody is laughing at me and I need to get new shoes because otherwise I feel very bad and very sad and nobody likes me because maybe I'm not uh, cool enough or something like this. So, you know, this is the actual emotion you want to, you want to act on. So if you know the emotion of your customer, then you can say, Hey, with this shoe, everybody is going to like you. Everybody thinks you are the coolest person in school or something because you are so great and this shoe is going to help you accomplish exactly that so that's the difference you don't want to tell somebody that's the most durable shoe and you will have it for 10 years and it's going to be amazing and it's so white and nice and you want to tell the emotion of you want to address exactly the emotion of the person because we never buy because something is so good we only buy because we think that's the thing I need right now because it's, right. it makes me feel good. So that's the yes. that's yes, the yes. that's, the, that's the right approach. And, and yeah. thanks yes, for yeah. this one. I think this helps. I think you. we are good. We are good. I think no other question we have. I think you are given a lot of even if a non-tech session, you are given a lot of information, like for who are running the business or who are willing to run the business okay so nice. that that will help us generally great very good nice yeah thank, thank you. you very much nice to talk yeah. see you soon bye see you soon.